Welcome, listeners, to a night of wonder. This is the two-timer series, Collective, a collection of different genres created by D.B. Watson. In this program, you will hear a different tale once a week read by me, A.J. Carter. If you enjoy any of these stories, please give us a follow. Thank you and enjoy. Truth. With through. With through. Henry Dubai, a 27-year-old accountant, stood in front of his mirror for the last 10 minutes, trying to gain the courage to break up with his lover, Peter Hugh. They'd been together for six months. The first half was amazing, not only in sex, but Peter was insanely wealthy. He insisted on paying for their lavish dinners and whirlwind travels. What more could anyone want in a lover? Henry would have to be insane to break up with such a perfect man, right? The reason was that he believed Peter was a werewolf. They met by accident. Henry was rushing to work because the train broke down, delaying him for 40 minutes. He had a meeting with his boss about an overdue project. While cutting through the traffic and avoiding people on the street, he was careless while crossing a driveway to a parking garage. The attendant climbed out of the car and forgot to shift the gear to park when the sports car started rolling back down the ramp. It was too late to avoid it when Henry saw the car coming at him. He swore his life flashed before him just when someone snatched him out of harm's way. The car barreled into traffic, slamming into a parked car. Henry, unharmed, never lost his balance because another person was holding him up. Is he there? said a voice. Are you okay? Henry looked at the man with eyes that could rival the most precious stones and fell speechless. The man stepped back, smiling, releasing Henry. Be more careful, okay? The striking man said as he started to walk away. Wait, Henry said as if his voice broke from a spell. The man turned back. Yes? Henry collected himself and smiled. Thank you. Don't mention it. Henry had more to say but couldn't get the words out, so all he could say was, Henry. Henry, is that your name? Henry nodded like a schoolboy talking to his crush. Oh, well, mine is Peter. Peter was all he could say, still dumbfounded with pleading eyes, and somehow Peter understood. Why don't I give you my card? Peter reached into his pocket and removed a slightly bent business card. Sorry about the crease, he said, passing it to Henry. Henry accepted the card with both hands, staring at the words as if they were ancient writings. Peter tilted his head, smiling. This is where you give me one of your cards. Henry looked at him, stunned. Yes, uh, of course. He quickly reached into his jacket and removed a silver-plated card holder case, removing one of his cards and passing it to Peter. I should get one of those holders, Peter said, studying the card. Yes, they're, uh, they're convenient. Peter smiled at Henry stumbling. Well, Henry, I hope to see you again. Tonight? Henry blurted out. Tonight? Peter said, caught off guard. Sounds great. Uh, I know a great little restaurant near my place. I can pick you up. I can make you dinner at my place, Henry said. Well, we just met. Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm being presumptuous. No, you're not. I would love that. I haven't had a home-cooked meal in a while. And you look trustworthy. I am. I promise I'll be the perfect gentleman. Great, see you at seven, Peter said before walking on. It's just what I was going to suggest, Henry called awkwardly. Great minds think alike. Peter called back with a wave. It was great for Henry. Besides Peter being younger, he behaved like the perfect lover, except when he didn't. There were times when Peter would disappear for a few days while blocking all contact. Then he'd returned, telling Henry he was away on business. There was always a full moon. During Peter's absence, Henry saw news reports of missing people. Then one night, when Peter finally returned and showed up on his doorstep, asking to spend the night, 
Henry saw blood on his jacket cuff. When he asked Peter about the blood, Peter would say it wasn't blood, a laugh it off, but never said what it was. Henry didn't want to leave him, but he didn't want to be that guy who protested ignorance when the feds or animal control kicked in his door. He had to end it. It was Henry's birthday. According to his lunar calendar, the next full moon wasn't out until the following day. He'd be safe. Peter arranged to cook Henry a birthday dinner at his apartment. Henry arrived by taxi, just as the sun was setting, and entered the upscale building with security on every floor, riding the elevator to the twentieth floor. He used a spare key Peter gave him on their first month anniversary. Peter told him he could come and go as he pleased. This will mark the first time Henry used it. He always knocked, and when Peter asked why, he would say he forgot he had it or left it at home. He entered the lavish room where Peter stood by the window with the curtains closed and one hand behind his back. Henry recalled there was a perfect view of the bay and skyline, and wondered why Peter kept them closed. Peter turned and smiled at him. You used your key, he said, approaching him. Yes, I finally did. I guess I was just nervous. Or is this goodbye? Henry was shocked by Peter's question. Peter, but he was cut short when a burning heat raced through his body, then suddenly passed. Can you tell me why? At least give me that, Peter asked, not missing a beat. I think you know why. Tell me, Henry. Say it. I think you're sick. Sick. In the head. A sudden burning headache stabbed him from behind his eyes, but he kept talking. Peter, I know that was blood on your jacket sleeve, and the missing people. With your disappearances and isolating yourself, what else could it be? You think I killed all those people? Can you explain the blood on your clothes and your behavior? Yes. So, it's true. You are a werewolf. Peter shook his head. No, those kills weren't mine. I cleaned up your mess. My mess? Henry, I'm not the werewolf. You are. Peter yanked open the curtains and revealed the handgun from behind his back, pointing it at Henry. Henry's eyes darted to the window and saw the most perfect full moon. You lose your bearings after transforming back to being human. I made sure to keep it that way. I changed your calendar to say the moon rising is the day after your birthday. But why? Henry asked while transforming into an eight-foot-tall werewolf. You killed my mother, Henry, on this very night. Peter freed his long-awaited tears while Henry rushed towards him with his fangs bare as Peter unloaded his gun, filled with silver bullets. The End Thank you for listening. This is a short story by D.B. Watson and read by A.J. Carter. You can find D.B. Watson at her website, twotimers.squarespace.com, and on Amazon.com. If you would like to hire me, A.J. Carter, to narrate your project, you can find me on aj.cartervo at gmail.com. Thank you, and see you next week.